Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, we're back again with our Down to Earth Sports, Sports Take Live, a special episode where we are going back home, ladies and gentlemen, uh, back home to where it all started. Some of you might ask the question, where did y'all come up with the name Sunnyside Sports Take? Well, we're going to talk all about that, where that name came from. But uh, this is our 26th episode, and uh, we are so glad we are growing, and we are continuing to put out positive sports information. Uh, give us a summary, Mr. President. Well, basically at this time, uh, like I said, this is our 25th or 26th episode as we started out doing uh, episodes once a month. And then a few months ago, we uh, moved on to uh, doing episodes on on a uh, bi-weekly basis. And right now you have so much sports going on right now with the Olympics just concluding. And now you have the Paralympics going on. You got the uh, the WNBA and they are doing well, the WNBA. I mean, those ladies are looking good. For the first time in several years, I'm a huge WNBA fan. I know the Angel Reese fine sex itself. I know she got something to do with that but wow i love the WNBA. i am enjoying it as you can see all the stuff that i keep posting about the WNBA. i'm a huge fan so with the WNBA, and then now you got the texans about to start up and i'm expecting a huge season for the texans if they can stay healthy i think the texans can go 12 and about 12 and 5 i'll give them 12 and 5 if they can stay healthy and then of course then you got the rockets gonna be starting up at the end of uh at the end of the month going to training camp so i think the rockets gonna have a good season and then you got my dallas cowboys my dallas cowboys they're gonna be winning this year too so i'm expecting huge things from the state of Texas. Understood, this my brother. Understood. I want to welcome uh, back home, our original member of SYS, and I want to hear what he feels about the sports that we're talking about. But how do you feel we still here in 2024? Do you remember back when we were talking about Sunny Five Side of uh, Brother Allen? Uh, certainly, sir. I'm, I'm still uh, very vibrant in the world that we're living in today. Uh, and as we talk about this, uh, the sports, I am a big component of the HBCU world. And I'm a Prairie View a m University fan, not, not, not just an alumni. I'm a Prairie View a m University sports fan. I look like my wife says it looked like I have an addiction uh, to <laughs> what goes on in Prairie View because every day we are witnessing that university, we are witnessing history in the making. And the establishment of that athletic program seems like just a lot of fun, but it's given so many opportunities to young men who look like you and I to go forward and be prosperous in the world through scholarships, through grants, through just opportunities to have a better life for families and to set new trends. And so I'm a HBCU fan and the number one fan of the Purdue View and University fans. Ooh. Understood, okay. my brother. All right. But how can you explain? Uh, they lost this past weekend <laughs> to the arch rival TSU. Oh, I can explain it quite well. Sir. I was I was at the game, sir. I I was at the game, uh, and so uh, in in a game, somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. And you're not going to win them all. You're not going to lose them all. And then anytime you open up a season, you don't really know exactly where you are or where you're going. You're hoping to be victorious. And that was some victories in it for Purdue because we have a very, very good team. But what we forgot is that Purdue, I bet Texas Southern has a very good team. They've been growing that team for about five years. And because they, they changed coach, coaches, yeah, yeah, they, changed coaches they, they didn't lose all the talent that they actually had on that team. So we, we wish TSU well because everybody says in, uh, in, the area, in this area that all championships in the SWAC ought to come through Texas. Understood, understood. And I just want to yeah. say... Prairie View has won that game the last at least five years. I Make know. Make it nine. 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 We were shooting for a 10 piece. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it, it was, they had been dominant, but all good things must, you know, Come change to after a while. But yes, you mentioned about the HBCU. I just want to give a shout out to Kamala Harris, uh, HBCU uh, alumni, as well as a Gr Greek fraternity alumni. And so we may have a historic occasion coming up. You want to say something about that, Brother Allen? Yeah, I think that we are all recognizing and I don't want to uh, I don't want to be divisive in a sense, but I want to be more encouraging for those who have not participated in the past to get uh, active and engaged in the voter process. 
I don't, I don't want to twist anybody's arm, even though you said we are certainly watching a young lady who has walked in the same uh, footsteps that we've walked in. We know what it's like to experience an HBCU and that, that says, to her, says to us that maybe she can relate to some of the things that we have uh, experienced and some of the things like ourselves. When we came out of our respective uh, universities, we became leaders in our families automatically for our nieces, our nephews, our cousins. If you want to be somebody, call Jeff. If you want to be somebody, call Philip. Why? Because they went to Purview. They went to Texas Southern. They went to Howard like she did. She's an AKA. He's an Omega. He's a Sigma. These are signs of success. We were just navigating through them at 18, 19, and 20 years old. Sunny Fireside, side, creation, vision, uh, looking forward to a brighter day. And I want to say this as we get started. How many times now in history will you find the number of young men from one community in a university all at the same time. I didn't say the same city, I said one community. That many young black men from one community, and we can't, we didn't even capture them all, you know, that were there. But to, yeah. I think you have a historic moment, but we didn't realize it. That's why I say Prairie View is history in the making. One Bay <laughs> Area may have had 30 men from Sunnyside in college. You probably don't have 30 in, at Prairie View now in the whole university. Wow. Well said, for a powerful mm -hmm. moment. And um, we have a legacy to uphold, and we, we do the best we can, but we can do better, and mm -hmm. we'll continue moving forward. Uh, okay, let's talk some sports. Brother Phil, did you get a chance to watch the Kansas City and Baltimore game? Yeah, absolutely. That game was spectacular. Uh, the quarterbacks are dynamic, the coaching is exceptional. And uh, for the first game of the year is a preview of what's to come. That could possibly be your AFC uh, conference championship game, possibly. But nevertheless, we got a treat for the first game. And so uh, it was well worth the watches. You know, had that big rain delay, kept you up a little while. But I enjoyed it thoroughly. And, uh, hey, like Mahomes said, maybe you wear white cleats next time we go into overtime. Or they go for that two and win it. But yeah. that was a toe. That was a toe. Hey, shouldn't some type of exception be made? I mean, it was just a toe, or is that the rule <laughs> that you got to go by? It? I mean, that, that should have been excitement for the game. There's some, shouldn't there be some kind of exception for that? Because it, it, it was such an exceptional play. Well, well, Carl, the play before, had he hit a man, he was wide open, Zay Flowers, I mean, Jackson should have just put it on him. He was, and even the play before that, the tight end was open. So, I mean, yep, you know, it breaks. it's, it's it little things like that that win or make big games like that. So, I mean, they lost to him two consecutive times. And for my money's worth, how does Lamar Jackson outrush Derrick Henry? I mean, that's your first flaw right there. Mm -hmm. You know, you pound with that big guy until you can't take up some clock. You can't give him a homes. We all know what he's capable of doing. I mean, he's, he's a magician. It, uh, several things on that, if I may, real quick. Uh, it always seems like L Lamar Jackson makes some exceptional plays, but he doesn't make those uh, easier, more, uh, I, I would say, precise plays. And that is the difference between him and Mahomes in a lot of ways. Uh, some other things, too. But uh, you were saying about, well, I go back to the toe. The toe. It should be some exception <laughs> about that. What you think, Mr. President? I, I really believe that the Kansas City have an advantage on the coaching staff. I really believe that's where the advantage is. Uh, now, I, I will admit that uh, Mahomes is a little bit better than than, than uh, Jackson is. Jackson's a better runner. Mahomes is a better pure passer. Uh, so I, I agree with that. I think he is a little bit better than Jackson. But I still think that overall, Kansas City has a little bit better coaching staff. Uh, they have a better pedigree over there. So uh, I think that you're going to always have that advantage because of that. When you have that kind of an advantage, you should take advantage of it. And I think they have, and they can, will continue to. I think the Kansas City is going to be good for several years to come. That team is set up for a while. Understood. Uh, Lawrence, what do you see as the projections for football this year? Are the Panthers going to win their division of the SWAT? If you would have asked me last week, I would have said, yes, sir. If you, <laughs> if you would have asked me seven days ago, I would have told you to get your uh, your tickets ready for the Celebration Bowl if you would have asked me that seven days ago. 
uh, it's an uphill journey now. The, the Panthers will compete for the division. Because now we need Texas Southern to lose two games in order to do that. Can you and share I, I, what what uh, part of the – because I know it's separated into two now. Uh, yes, sir. Who Who is in prayer views? Well, let's take it yeah, by – Yeah, Alcorn State. Yeah, okay, go take ahead. Take it by I'm the sorry, states. Sir. Take it by the states. You got prayer view in Texas Southern and Texas. Uh, the next state, you got UAPB. That's the that's the state only only HBCU there in Arkansas, and then we have three schools. You have Grambling in Louisiana, right? You right. have Southern in Louisiana. That's in that, that mm -hmm. state, and then there are three HBCUs in Mississippi. So they dropped Alcorn, which is closest to Southern, mm -hmm. in what's called the West Division. When mm -hmm. you look in the East Division, you go from the from the top down. Come out of Alabama, and you got Alabama A and M. And Alabama mm -hmm. State that leaves two additional uh, schools in Mississippi not covered: Jackson State and Mississippi Valley. And we've mm -hmm. added the great state of Florida to the SWAC about three years ago, and that gives mm -hmm. us Florida A and M and Bethune Cookman rounding out the East Division of the uh, SWAC now. Mm -hmm. Well, when we were in school, there were only seven schools in the SWAC, but there are twelve now. Okay. Growing, growing, and the stature mm -hmm. of the name is is growing also. Uh, SWAC is one of the historic traditional conferences, like back like the Southwest Conference was. But hey, you know that's gone. SWAC is still here and building. Do you have a comment on professional football? What you see? Well, I will, but let me say this before I go forward. I want you to understand about my institution. The SWAC started at Purdue A and M University. And so in 1920. And so we want to make sure that we always recognize where greatness begins. And as we were talking earlier about, about those two teams, one of the things you realize is that the Kansas City Chiefs is made up of champions. They're made up of champions. And not mm -hmm. just on the field, in preparation, in attitude, in belief. And that's why, as Brother Jeff said, they'll be hard to beat for years to come because they believe that they should be dominant and they should win. And they can they can plug and play. They can take one off and put another one on. And yeah. as long as you have that young man at, at quarterback, you have a mm -hmm. shot at winning it all because he can do things that are unconventional. Regardless mm -hmm. of the play that's called, he can make something happen if it needs to be. But at the same time, that other young man for Baltimore, that's where his greatness is too. When things break down, he can make things happen. Early right. in the year, he's going to be very conservative because you don't want injuries. You just don't want injuries. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm cheering this year. I'm rooting for it for the first time in my life, believing that the Texans can do great things this year. I do believe that. I do believe that the attitude is in the locker room and the hope is in the locker room. We were surprised last year. You know, we were tuning in every week saying, how long is this going to go? But this mm -hmm. year, the expectation is when we turn on that we'll have victories. And so we already know how, how how frantic things can be in Houston with with our love you, love you blue days with the Oilers. As this thing takes off with the Texans, they're gonna have to build another stadium so we get this hundred and forty thousand in the building because the people have been waiting and waiting for a winner like this for a long time. Exactly. So you you'll be it'll be you'll be surprised what's about to happen with the overflow with the Houston Texans this year. Sounds yep. great. Sounds optimistic and, and great. Great things to look forward to. But I, I, I'll say this. We got a backup plan in case something happens with C.J. Stroud. We have Davis Mills. We have Davis <laughs> Mills as the backup Davis. quarterback. Oh, okay. That's right, an right. inside joke, Lawrence. That's an inside joke. <laughs> hey, Jeff, uh, we had a, a poll that was put on the site. Uh, were you surprised at some of the answers? And give a kind of an over projection. We know right now the Packers are playing the Eagles. Who's going to win that game, Jeff? And give us who are the top teams that are going to be playing this year and, and winning. I have uh, Philly winning that game. And uh, in the uh, AFC, I have uh, Houston winning the AFC South with 11 and 6 record. I have the Colts coming in second at 10 and 7 with the Jags at 8 and 9 and the Titans at 7 and 10. Over in the AFC West, I have KC winning that division with a 13 and 4 record. I have the AC East, I have Miami winning that division with 11 and 6 record and Buffalo coming in second at 10 and 7. AFC North, I have Cincinnati winning that conference with a 10 and 7 record and I have Cleveland and Pittsburgh fighting it out uh, for that second spot at 9 and 8. And then over in the uh, in the uh, uh, the NFC, I have Philly winning their conference at, with a 12 and five record. I have Dallas coming in second at 10 and seven. 
I have in the AFC North, I have Detroit winning that division with a 12 and 5 record with Green Bay coming in second at 10 and 7. In the AFC South, I have Atlanta winning that division at 10 and 7 with New Orleans coming in second at 9 and 8. And in the NFC West, I have San Francisco winning that at 13 and 4 with a 13 and 4 record. Powerful, powerful. <laughs> Good predictions, and we put them on our, our site. And Jeff is doing his third annual uh, fantasy football league on the site. So I encourage anybody out there in the audience, if you want to participate in sports predictions, come on our site, check it out. Uh, Brother Allen, I want to ask you, uh, I'm going to first go to Phil, but I want to come back and ask you about winning attitude. It seems like that I remember all throughout the history of us growing up and so forth, that you were surrounded by winning attitude from your mom and from uh, Lawrence Senior. So I want to come back and ask you that. Phil, I want to get your predictions. Well, I don't have a big comprehensive uh, breakdown like Jeffrey gave you, but I will say this. I'm impressed with the Detroit Lions and especially the way the organization has grown itself from the many years of just disastrous seasons. Um, you know, and then I'm looking at Green Bay, which a team I've never been a fan of because they beat my beloved Cowboys always at the wrong time. But I this is the first year since 1988 that I didn't play the traditional of fantasy football. And typically I like to pick quarterbacks early. People say, hey, I don't do that. But I've won a many leagues and I've lost a many leagues. Spent a lot of money having fun doing it. But I'm just fascinated with uh, Love. He's a year behind what I thought he would do. I thought he would do what he did last year, the year before. So I picked him and he was horrible. And so, you know, he started and he kind of, you know, gave me some funny feelings and I cut him. And then all of a sudden he went on a rampage and destroyed Dallas in the playoffs. But nevertheless, teams like that, I mean, they're long shots, you know. And, and Houston, as much as we have great expectations, if they don't win, I mean, we're so used to them not winning, but we want it so bad. Want it so bad. And they and they they may give us what we want this year. And we'll be very grateful for that. So those are the kind of teams. I mean, Frisco and Buffalo and all these teams that's always talked about, hey, their windows is closing to me. So we'll see what some of these other teams can do. And Detroit is hungry. Now, if they fall flat on their face this year, I would be very surprised. I just think the progression usually is. You know, you get to the heights they got to, you get beat, you get that disappointment, but you keep that same drive, and you come back with the kind of coach they got. I'm, I'm very impressed with him. And then on the other side, like I said, D'Amico Ryans, he's an exceptional person, let alone coach. So I think he instills that in the players. And I'm not that concerned about what they're going to do. I just think expectations ought to go past what they did last year and further. So I'll be watching, like I said, Houston and Detroit are the teams that just really fascinate me because I know what their progressions like. And Houston's even faster than Detroit. But Detroit has been building for a couple of years. Houston kind of just, in D'Amico's first year, that's rare. And it, and we're not even talking about C.J. Stroud, are we, are we call? I mean, did we not get that straight in training camp last year when I said he was going to? Okay, all right. Just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, no surprise. I mean, his college career and his pro career are mirroring each other. It's, that doesn't happen often. Same thing with Mahomes. And I'm not comparing him to Mahomes, but I just want to drop that nugget because call, you know, we gave us our joke about Davis. I had to give you my joke about Stroud, so we're good. <laughs> I, I just want to update uh, Brother Lawrence on, on, on what the inside joke is. Yeah, let him know. I, I, him I originally know. said that we didn't need to uh, draft a quarterback when we drafted C.J. Stroud <laughs> because we had Davis Mills. Yeah, Mills. Good enough. We need to draft some big blind people and the quarterback. And that's okay. You had a right to believe play. that. That's However, right. he totally proved me wrong. He totally proved me wrong, and I, I'm not ashamed <laughs> to admit it. Uh, uh, well, hold on, Scott. Let me give you the real synopsis. So, Carl skipped over real quick. He basically said he should, and since we did have him, give him the clipboard and the baseball cap and let Davis yep. play. Yep. And I said, you yep. can't do that because he's that much better than Davis, and it proved out. So, Carl. Yep. We had to laugh about it. And that was in yeah. training camp. That wasn't even yeah. I had no idea CJ Stroud was that good. I mean, hey, hey, I did, Lawrence, I did... Lawrence, Lawrence, his convictions, Carl's convictions were strong. You yeah, couldn't talk yeah, yeah. Him. We loved it. You we loved it. I respect it. I, I like it. Yeah. You know, you couldn't talk about it. I'm not telling him. Lawrence nothing. Well, he, he, he hadn't changed. He, he, he hadn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> he knows me better than y'all do. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Uh, brother, brother Allen, on, yes, on sir. a serious tip, though. That winning attitude, what is that about? 
And, and I mean, I, we have seen teams with great chemistry beat a team with talent. I don't know if you remember the Detroit Pistons had great chemistry and beat the team, the Los Angeles Lakers, with great talent, Shaq and all the rest of them. What is the ingredient or quality that causes that? Uh, brother, success is in relationship. You can have talent, but do you have relationship? Uh, success is bred by individuals that you can look up to. Uh, if I look at the screen today, every young man that I ever uh, been around in terms of the sunny five side, and as I'm looking at Brother Jeff and, and yourself, for me and I looked up to. So all my entire life, I had a chance to aspire just to the next level to the brother that was standing in front of me, you know? I didn't have to look to the NFL, the NBA, the, uh, anywhere else to find greatness. It was always walking right next to me. I didn't see myself as great. I saw those who were walking around me as greater men than myself. So as you as you may but, have said, my because parents- Because of the circle that we were in, we had expectations that we could achieve just like they could achieve. Well, as you talked about my parents, uh, my parents navigated where I put my feet. You know, and that that means they put me in fertile soil. Mm -hmm. And that were that were places they permitted me to go, and places they forbid me to go. Right. And if and in that, by being obedient to the places that she wanted me to go, then I was able to benefit from being in those places with the Alexander at Per Review, going on to the other spaces in life. It looks like it's just uh, that that greatness is is a is a circumstance. But it is an intentional uh, placement of your children. It's an intentional thing. What schools you choose, you know, what 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 thoughts you put in their minds, what music they listen to, whether you party on the porch and whatever you do to to make sure that person feels love. And then there's a word that's always spoken above them, and that's expectations. See, mm -hmm. everybody on this this call on this panel tonight has had expectations. Mm -hmm. Expectations. Maybe you thought you couldn't reach them. Maybe you thought it wasn't fair, but you couldn't say you didn't have expectations. And in that case, that's why you talked about a winning attitude. Because once you were able to meet that expectation, you realized that you had so much more in you to give. And you start looking at other horizons. And now as you are developing and raising your own children, it looks like they're scared of expectations. And you know, and, and you may not even want to put too much on them, but you realize they could they can reach it, they can do it, but somebody has to have a standard. They call them light workers. You see, I, I look at people in the real spiritual sense. They're light workers, and I've been surrounded by many of them. Mm -hmm. I was afraid to ever walk and talk to my friends and say, I'm not successful. I understand. I'm not. The, you know, the circle I walked in, a uh, circle of successful men. And so, like I said, steel sharpens steel, iron sharpens iron. And when you can look left and you can look right and you see the people that you hang with doing well, you know you can do well because birds of a feather flock together. Yes, there you go, yes, my brother. Let me, let me ask you this, Lawrence. On Lord. that same note, to sum it up with Lawrence just said, old guy once told me, say, son, if you tell me who you're with, I can tell you who you are. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Yeah. Lawrence, let me ask you this. Uh, one of the first memories we have of hanging with a dad listening to the baseball game, uh, the Astros, uh, they were down quite a bit at first, but they made a great comeback and now they are in the lead. What do you attribute that to? And uh, I, I don't know if everybody knows, he was a, a college baseball player, played center field and has a, a great expertise with that. Uh, what do you say about the uh, Astros baseball? Well, the Astros are no different than the Kansas City Chiefs. They believe they're supposed to win. Regardless to who's, who's injured, they believe they're supposed to win. And so that means they're not going to quit. They're not going to give up. And because they recognize that it's a season, not a game. A lot of people enjoy winning a game. Just like yep. you said, Texas Southern won a game. Prairie mm -hmm. is telling you now, it's a season, mm -hmm. not a game. And so you'll realize that the Astros were always looking for the end result. They want to play ball in the playoffs. So it's a season, not a game. And right. so... They were able to put some things together and they're not at full strength now, you know? And so realize that their, their whole objectives and goals are even higher 
than to have a winning season. They've got to be in the playoffs, and the city needs them to always be very successful. And so the objectives for the individuals, like we talked about, the relationships and iron sharpens iron, the expectations for the Astros is just higher than the others. If they make true. the playoffs and lose, it's a, it's a dismal season. Okay? And so you Let me ask you an important question. Yes. Do you ever wish that you had really learned to hit a curveball? Well, <laughs> you know, what I came to realize about baseball and all sports, and, and not so much today, is that uh, in our communities, we didn't have the same training. We didn't. We had access to the sport, but we didn't have the same development. And so what we were doing naturally, if you go back and I'm just talking about sports and look at the young men in general that came up in our communities, even that five slammer jammer area, the Clyde Drexlers, the Michael Young, they was just playing off a of raw, raw talent. There was no, no, uh, nowhere for them to go to get training and all that kind of stuff. They were doing that on baseball leagues. We played in, we played on just instinct skill and what you had to develop. And other communities had training and understood certain things and pitching and all that kind of stuff. So what, what we realized is that we, given the proper training, we would have dominated every sport and everything on the planet Earth, right? So we were yeah. separated from that. And we're going to talk about that because we're going to uh, talk about this upswing in tennis. But first, I want to ask Phil about the Astros and the, the state of how they're doing and as I asked, are they going to get back to the World Series? Their chances as good as anybody else's, Carl. Like uh, Lawrence just said, you know, the uh, attitude that they carry themselves with, you know, is it expectations, as he said. But back to what he was saying, too, about the Little League, we were the first guys to have a Little League team over at St. Mary's in the early 70s. And that puts you at about the sixth grade. And so we're playing and we're sanctioned league. At the end of the year, they give us the idea of, hey, you guys made all-stars. You're going to go play Pearland. Now, from third ward to Pearland in 74, 75, it was a big difference from Pearland you see now. Mm, yes, sir. So when we get out there to play them, it's a night game. We had never played a night game. We never – we had nice uniforms. Some of the best people supported us, which is Unity mm -hmm. Bank, which is was Riverside back then. We had uh, forward times. And various other business, jet cleaner. Man, they gave us some clean mm -hmm. uniform. But when we get out the Paradise and see the lights, the stands, the people, and they had all the same uniforms. And the irony is a couple of the white guys on that team had been playing ball with us at the Y basketball. And we were traveling. We got new uniforms when they came. Just to tell the truth, like, mm -hmm. like you said. Now, with that being said, the moral of the story is six years later, we're seniors in high school. Who you think won state in the state of Texas for a that same group of guys that beat us 14 mm -hmm. to 3 in the Pearland game, which it was another level which I had never seen. And we knew right. we were pretty decent. And like you said, we were there with no real training. We just came out and played. We didn't have real, real coaches. We had guys barely older than us coaching the team. And the league was sanctioned because a guy wanted to have this in our community. We didn't have a real food. We played in the back of St. Mary's where all that stuff is now where the bazaar used right. to be at. And mm -hmm. it was great because we had we didn't have dad's pitch, but we had the minors and majors. And we probably serviced about a uh, hundred kids. That was a lot back then. With about 14, 12 teams between both leagues. And some of those games were awesome. I mean, I could go on and on about that. But the point is, given the right opportunity, had we known what they known. We would have been the ones that won state, but we didn't play baseball as much as they did. So there's a lot of things. But back to the Astros, they're going to be just fine. I said pump the brakes when they were getting killed early in the year. On this show, we can go back and look at any show. I say the same thing each time. You had a new manager. They missed Dusty. They had injuries. And even with Verlander coming back, they were going to be okay. Now, he has to get back right. I mean, he's still been getting hit pretty good. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I've always said, in baseball, good pitching stops good hitting. And that's usually what's the case. The pitching is, but if hitting is dominant, it's going to win. But the Astros are going to be fine. I think they're on the right trajectory. I think they're going to do just well. It took them a little while, but it's no cakewalk, but it never has been for them. When we get there, we have to earn it. They've never been that dominant to just blow anybody out. But they win because they stick together and they overcome a lot of adversity. Carl, the key to the Astros is to get to the postseason. That's going to be the key. Because yes, what I'm noticing, 
they play very well against the better teams, but they have a, a letdown against the weaker teams. So when you get to the playoffs, you don't have to worry about the weaker teams. So the key is, is to get to the postseason and then you kick you kick ass. Just an update, uh, Mr. President. Uh, uh, you said the 21st may not be a good day, maybe the 22nd for our uh, sojourn out into the community with our shirts on going to yeah. the baseball game. Yeah, yeah I have a family function that day. I, I don't want to miss that family function. So two, maybe the twenty second. Okay, so that's that. That's that. Um, that's a Sunday. Is that okay yeah. with you, Phil? No, that's my sister's no. birthday too. Okay. Well, okay, we'll, so. we'll go back and look at it. Uh, yeah, we'll time. figure out something. Yeah, that okay. that that's an important thing, and we want to keep that going. And, and our new shirts are coming in soon. Uh, sports is such a, a unique and necessary and growing internally and externally part of our community. Not every country has this kind of emphasis on sports. However, as we saw in basketball, uh, the world is catching up. Uh, track, uh, Botswana gave the United States the hardest time in the mile relay. Uh, what do you say about international sports, uh, specifically the you know, how the women and the men in basketball are almost on the same level as the United States. You have anything to say about that, uh, Brother Allen? Well, you know, uh, uh, I married uh, Barbara Jackie's niece. And so I'm sitting here with all the memorabilia from the Olympics throughout my house when she was the uh, the coach in 1992. And so when you talk about international sports, what you have uh, today is a equal playing field. Like they say, the world is now flat. And that's because everybody has access to that equal training. Exactly. You know, just, just with technology today, uh, I think each and every one of us, when we want to learn something, we just Google it and figure it out now. And so you, we were once the how we once housed all the knowledge of how to actually improve athletics in certain areas. But now it's it's known throughout the world. And in order to, to stretch our dollar, we took sports throughout the world you know, to, 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 to increase our bottom line. And mm -hmm. so that individuals don't have to stay in their countries to learn. These individuals that you're watching that represent other countries, they also live in America. And they participate in sports in America. But in the Olympics, they're what? Representing their home country. And so we're no longer just this place you have to go to get the knowledge. They've already imported many people from, from America that had the sport. And they, so the same set of skills are being taught now all over the world. The next move is Africa. Let me yes. ask this. Yes. Let me ask this. Uh, there's been an upswing in, I guess, black tennis players. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. This is one of the first people since Arthur Ashe that has gotten to this level. Uh, his name is Francis Niago, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is he still in the Hunt for the U.S. Open championship. Well, he played today. Have anybody heard the results? He played today against Taylor Fritz. Uh, he's probably been playing today. It may, it may be over by now. I haven't, I haven't heard Americans. yet. Yeah. Huh? Said two Americans. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. He's playing. He's playing tonight. I don't know what the outcome is yet, but he's playing tonight. So what, uh, Phil? What do you think about the? Is will Black American players dominate tennis well, soon? Well, I mean, in, tennis in the male level. level. Well, what's that now? The, on the male side. We've already oh, yeah. had the domination on the female side. I mean, anything that we can do that's athletic, we're going to excel. I mean, that's just the way it is. If, if you give us enough time to get into it, male or female, I mean, that's what we do as a race of people. Athletics is our thing. Uh, tennis is a sport that takes a lot of, a lot of work. It's individual. You don't have teammates to rely on. So it's in your heart. It's in your gut. It's in your ability and it's in your thinking because it's a lot of strategy. And that's a sport I wish I had learned at an early age. If I had to pick between golf and tennis, pick tennis because it 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 exudes what you really are. I mean, you know, there's no nowhere to aren't hide. Some you show everything you can do right there. Are there some inherent barriers in there for young black men? Uh, of course, we got the physical talent, but we do we have access to the facility. Well, that's, that's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, basketball, baseball, you don't need any money to do that. But at some point in tennis, you got to buy the rackets. 
more than likely you're going to need some training. But the facilities now, I mean, look at what Zena did over at McGregor Park, you know, uh, you know, her and Lori McNeil and some others. I mean, it's not impossible. We just have to have someone, uh, you know, Mr. Wilkerson made that an exceptional uh, opportunity for anybody that wanted it back then. I mean, it just wasn't popular as it is now. And, mm -hmm. you know, sports evolve just like people evolve. So as a race, we see that as an avenue to get better and do things we want to do. I mean, tennis is no exception. I enjoy it. I actually can sit down and watch tennis. Still struggling with golf, but I like knowing a little bit about it. But I know that's even more popular. But hey, let's talk about pickleball. That's what I'm coming to realize <laughs> that people are going nuts. Hey, give us an explanation of what pickleball is. Carl, I'm still uh, processing that information, but I know people that play and they've invited me to play, but I'm too lazy to do anything like that now. But I just know they have a channel for it. I hear about it. They got tournaments. And if we don't know now, we'll know soon. It is here. It's not on the way. It's here. They will debut at the next Olympics. Yeah, see, there you go. They will debut. They, they, mm -hmm. Hey, I rather that say that doesn't break necessarily dance. give a give I'd rather say that. They going away from the break dance dance dance. Dance too. I mean, that's a fun thing to watch when it's done right. But uh, right. we're gonna see what pickleball uh, evolves into because I know it's popular. Olympics has got. Uh, uh, they brought on break dancing hey, yeah. sport. So, <laughs> hey, you know, we got to be careful brother. about judging yeah, brother, that. Brother, 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 Let's brother. welcome our brother, Dennis Bradley. Dennis Bradley. How y'all doing? What's All up, right, Dennis? brother. How you doing? Let's get him in before he missed that touchdown. He going to miss that touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, uh, all right. we were talking right. about tennis and the upswing of Black American players. And will we be able to dominate tennis? in the way that, you know, we've come to dominate basketball. What's your opinion of that, Dennis? I think that with the opportunity, uh, yes. You know, all we need is opportunity. And I think that uh, we're looking at everything as a, as opportunities. It's not something that's once in a lifetime anymore. Uh, understood, understood. Uh, we've been talking about the Astros. Of course, we gave uh, NFL predictions and – uh, we've been just uh, going to gambit on a lot of sports. Uh, I see you got a lot going on around you, but uh, <laughs> when you could get in a, a comment, that'll be cool. Uh, Mr. President, okay. what do you okay. say about the uptick in tennis players and will America, uh, uh, excuse me, black America um, be able to dominate that? Mr. President. Uh, basically what it comes down to is this. Once we see our own having success, in that arena, then you start seeing more motivation from us to want to enter into that arena. So it's all about seeing someone that looks like us have success. And so once you see more and more of us having success, then you see more and more of us having more motivation to enter into that field and we will have more success because it all comes down to uh, our motivation. We have to be properly motivated. If we're properly motivated, we already have the skill set, we already have the know-how, and we already have the determination. We just have to put our minds to it and have a plan and execute the plan. That's Mr. all. Mr. President, about. Uh, what is if there are any? <clears throat> excuse me. Updates on the NBA. <clears throat> Um, the NBA, basically, uh, nothing's going on right now with the NBA. They're ready to go to training camp here in a few weeks. So really, nothing is going on. I'm hearing some rumblings, but you, you don't know if it's just rumbling, somebody just talking. I'm, every time I hear about a trade proposal that involves the Rockets, we're always on the, on, the, on the bottom end of that trade. Like, for instance, there was a trade proposal where Houston sends um, uh, Jalen Green, Cam Whitmore, and uh, one other player, along with trap, draft picks, for Trey Young from Atlanta, I'm like, I'm not giving up Jalen Young, uh, Jalen Green, would and all of that. Be a bad trade. Exactly. Every trade they propose involves Houston. Always, Houston gets the short end of the stick every time. Every <laughs> I time. want to talk about two uh, sports leagues that are starting. Uh, one is the professional track league. Uh, DD, have you heard about that? Michael Johnson, Carl Lewis, I think Cindy McLaughlin. Have you heard about that? Yeah, I heard about. Uh, uh, Michael Johnson starting a, a professional uh, track circuit, uh, mainly focused in America. You know, you got the European uh, league uh, that that's very prevalent and, and very lucrative to athletes. He's trying to bring it here in America, so athletes don't have to travel all over the world just to make some money. Understood. I think I've always thought that 
there should be some kind of way because as you say in Europe it's big business and yes. they sell out the stadiums all the time and you know they got the Diamond League going on. Can you tell us about a little bit about the Diamond League? Yeah, I can. I mean, it's um something that you have to qualify based off of time and performance. And then I think they have a series of about 10, 10 meets. And you can make a lot of money by scoring the most. Just say if you're number one in the in a total points, you get a million dollars at the end. So uh every meet you go to, you get you get paid uh from first uh to to last, which is eighth place in the Diamond League. Uh if you break a record, you get a bonus. If you break a world record, you get a bonus. If you beat a meat record, you get a bonus. So it's, it's very lucrative, and it, and the stadiums are always packed for every meet. Understood. A big controversy now is Cindy McLaughlin and not being able to compete because she was, when they had the Diamond League last year, she was hurt and trying to rehab for the Olympics. But now she wants to run a hundred and the four hundred, and they saying she can't run because she didn't uh, participate in the other times. That doesn't seem to be fair because she was hurt. But that is the state of the rules and, and so forth. Uh, there's so much happening in the sports all the time. Uh, uh, Jeff, you mentioned all the time about how a lot of these ladies are starting to cash in. Angel Reese is cashing in and. The WNBA is one of the bigger things out there now. Should be getting close to having their playoff. Uh, what do you see is the future, the near future, and then the further off future of the WNBA, Mr. Mr. President Jeff? Well, well, uh, first of all, I see that these, these ladies are going to start getting bigger and bigger uh, shoe contracts, bigger and bigger endorsement contracts. So you're going to see that first, and you're already seeing that. That's already starting, and you're going to see that more and more. But then in another two to three years, when expansion hits, you're going to start seeing their salaries are start, going to start going up in, 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 in commensurate with their abilities. But before, before I, I back away from that, is this here. Right. I need to know what you guys' opinion is on this. Cheryl Swoops. Have you guys heard about how they're giving Cheryl Swoops a hard time over her comments about uh, Caitlin Clark? They, they really giving her a hard time. I mean, they are dogging her. She was doing a telecast uh, a fever telecast, and they would talk. They asked her something about the success of the fever because now the fever is now sitting at eighteen and sixteen, so they they're coming along now. And she didn't mention Caitlin Clark, so because she didn't miss mention Caitlin Clark, they feels like well she doesn't like Caitlin Clark. So now all of a sudden everybody is giving her a hard time because they feel like that she doesn't like Caitlin Clark. What it comes down to is this here. If you don't like Clayton Clark, you're gonna be you you're gonna be exiled. And so now you have you want to see the internet. The internet is blowing up. Everybody's dogging out swoops. They calling her a racist. You even got Stephen A. Smith that then dogged her out. You now got Charles Barkley that then chimed in, and now he's talking against her. I'm like, why? Why do we do that to our sisters? How come we can't support our sisters? Why we always got to run to the other side every time there is a, an issue? How come as black men we don't support our sister? Uh, Brother Lawrence, do you have any comment on the Caitlin Clark controversy or the WNB, uh, WNBA? Well, I think you, you've seen this. You've read this book before. If you go back and remember when Larry Bird was considered the great white hope of the NBA, uh, the expectations. Now, I, I am a Caitlin Clark fan. I think she's an outstanding basketball player. And so, but what I do understand is that all of these sports is a business. And she is driving the revenue towards that sports right now and lifting all of that league up, whether it's based on race or feelings or what have you, she is the drawing card for the WNBA right now. And so I don't think you will ever find a players from another generation to give a younger player uh, that much credit so early in the game because they have not earned, you know, what we call swack hours or whatever it is. You don't have the hours to be considered the GOAT of the league when people have put sweat. So we understand where Cheryl be coming from. She says this girl has to put in some more time and do some other things before we give her that credence. You're talking about a Hall of Famer in Cheryl Swoops. So she's not going to exactly. give out accolades to a rookie as though they're a Hall of Famer. So we can, we can stand with her in that. But at the same time, we all have to recognize when you hear Stephen A. Smith, when you hear Charles Barkley, 
It's all about business. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all that negative press is still good press. Don't let nobody <laughs> fool you. Negative conversation is heard just like positive conversation. So it's used for the benefit of viewership uh, in the WNBA. Totally, totally. I hear you, Scully. I hear you, Scully. Uh, Lawrence, I understand that, but they are really showing Cheryl a lot of hatred. If you go read the comments from thousands of people I'm talking about, they are really digging into Cheryl. She, 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 this could be dangerous for her because they love that that gig at Caitlin Clark. Well, let me they, say this: they, they, you'd have to go read some of the comments that I've read. You wouldn't have had a conversation about mm -hmm. the WNBA NBA in the last fifteen years. You, we wouldn't even be talking about anybody in the WNBA in the last fifteen years. All conversation is good conversation. It drives revenue. It drives. I uh, yeah. let, let's hear from Dennis. Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, you know, I, I agree with uh, with Lawrence. Uh, how you doing, Lawrence? I haven't talked to you in a long time. Hey, hello. How you doing, sir? <laughs> doing good. But I don't know anything about what Cheryl Scoot said, so I'm out of loop on that. But I just want to say that you know you can you can say positive and negative things about Caitlin Clark, but you got to give her her due. Uh, she had brought the WNBA back. Not to say that they they are. Uh, we're not playing good basketball, but the recognition is off the charts. So what I'm saying is, if you're going to say something negative, you better say something positive. You know, you got to give her a just do about not only what she brought to the WNBA, but the recognition she brought to the WNBA and the way she's playing. She's not playing like a rookie. Uh, so give her a just do. Uh, but at the same time, I think if I was a former player, it's okay uh, to – Recognize somebody when they're doing something great. Black, white, green, or blue. It's also okay to criticize the things that she can do better. Or like, for example, uh, what Jeff says, she needs to put some more time in. Uh, but give her just do right now. I think she deserved that. Understood. I agree with and, that. And, I agree and with that. A, and it's a very – she. It, it, there's an excitement out there about the WNBA. You, you're looking at the stats to see, okay, what's going on? Jeff said Indiana's 18 and 16. They started out uh, well behind, but have been winning and caught up and have had some historic games. Uh, Angel Reese has done very good, too. It's still a debate as to who will win Ricky of the Year. I'm sure Caitlin's going to win it, but it's a debate because she's the all-time single-season rebounding leader, Angel Reese is. And she has an OnlyFans cover. She's a pretty girl. So what's wrong with yeah, that? Yeah. Co MVP. I mean, Jason that's Kidd. What I'm Jason yeah. Kidd and um, uh, I know, I know, but I'm just saying hypothetically, Jason Kidd and um, uh, Grand Hill shared a rookie of the year. When in my opinion, clearly the rookie of the year, but they were both good. It's just a matter of being reasonable. If you were to do that, it's not a crime. I mean, it's not like one is significantly better than the other. They have different games. They're not even the same type players because Angel Reese can't score like Caitlin, and Caitlin can't rebound like Angel. That's right, what's right. going to happen next call. That's what's going to happen But her next. team is winning, and I get that. So I'm okay with Caitlin Clark being rookie, and I'm okay with Angel. Angel going to be fine home regarding no matter what. She has carved out oh. her own niche in this league. So has Caitlin. I'm just interjecting it, in my opinion, in a reality, it could be. Co I mean, it's not like one is so much better than other. You could do co MVP. I mean, co rookies of the year, which is probably won't happen. But it's, not, it's happened before in, in professional leagues. It's not okay, a co rookie. Who's your rookie of the year? Say again. Who's your rookie of the year? Who's your vote? Who's your, let's, let's take a vote. Who's your rookie of the year? Uh, I'm just going by all the information that's out there. I think I've watched two games all year, so maybe I don't have enough background. However, I'm going to go with uh, Phil's, what he said, co-rookie co of the year. That's okay, what, what about you, Lawrence? Let me make it clear. Check I'm gonna the go viewership. With that. Check who's watching the games and how many people watching these games. That's the rookie of the year. If the numbers that is true. Off the, the attendance the game, rise. That's the rookie that's of the year. That's the rookie of the year. Okay? Yes, sir. You have never seen the, Okay, uh, we are at champion. the end of our episode. Yeah. Uh, this is the 26th episode of 
Sunny Five Side Live, and we've had a great occasion. I'm going to go back to the beginning. We talked about the beginning of SYS. We started as a group of friends in Prairie View. Uh, a brother Lawrence mentioned that uh, we, you know, we came together in Prairie View. We talked about different things. We organized. Back 40 years ago, uh, we started this thing and started this uh what we have, what, what, this fellowship is the best term, I guess, that we have today and it's evolved into what we're doing. And we have many other members of SYS out there. And uh, this is kind of a collaboration that we join in and talk about sports. So uh, it's evolved to that and, and it's a good thing. Um, Mr. President, would you like to give a summary? And then I want to ask our two guests uh, if they want to give a a, a a shout out to what they're doing, as well as uh, some of the sports. Uh, Mr. President. All right, my summary is that I'm gonna go back to uh, um, the Caitlin Clark situation with Cheryl Swoops. I agree with what you said, Lawrence. I agree with what you said, Phil. I agree with you guys. I just feel like that they're overreacting. I think that they're they're just they're really overreacting. They're blowing everything out of proportion. You can't say anything or not say anything about Caitlin Clark and everybody just goes crazy. If anything, if, if they feel like you should have said something about her and you didn't, then they're going to be mad at you. And if you say something about her that they don't like, they're going to be mad at you. I just think that they're blowing everything out of proportions. It's going to uh, that being time. said, But with that being said, uh, looking at the, um, um, the, the best teams in the WNBA right now, they're going to live six. So I got I, right now I got the liberty being the being, being the one. Um, I think the aces. I think they're gonna end up playing the aces. Excuse me. Who's that? Who am I hearing? I'm hearing background stuff. Okay. So I, I right now I got the liberty uh, winning the, uh, the WNBA title. I got the liberty winning the WNBA title, and I, I have I the Astros to... making the playoffs, and I got the Astros going on to the uh, to the pennant and losing in the World Series. Mm. Mm. Those, those are two predictions. I just want to mention yeah. the aces in the WNBA. Are the last two, uh, last two year champions, and I'm not gonna count them out until somebody beats them. Uh, Brother Lawrence, can you give a summary of uh, what you are doing out there in the community, as well as what you feel about sports? Well, certainly, I want to just thank you, brothers, for the invitation uh, to be with you tonight and to have such a lively conversation. And as we continue to work now, I'm still working on in some political campaigns. I want to encourage everybody during this season to participate. Notice I didn't say vote for any particular candidate, but let's just get in, engaged. I'm working on a campaign now that's called Black Men Vote. And so they say we are the demographic that will turn the tides if we would participate. So I'm encouraging all Black men and all men, actually, to participate in this democratic process as we go forward. As you know, my mother and every my sister, everybody's in politics, and so... Uh, we just want to make sure that we uh, hold up the banner for those who fought for us to have this right by participating as we go forward. And as we talk about the world of sports, I want to, again, uh, congratulate uh, you and Brother Bradley, these two TSU graduates, for beating Purdue and University. We want to congratulate you on that. But at the end, we'll bring you believe in the season. We'll see you at the end. This is Sounds good. Have a great one now in Georgia. Okay. Yeah, you too, my brother. You too, All right. Take care. Brother Dennis, uh, your, your your final word, what, what's happening in the community? Who's winning the game? Uh, Katie George is playing Travis. And my son is a running backs coach, uh, a passing coordinator for Katie Jordan. They're up right now 21 to 0. Uh, what I'm doing on, on certain days throughout the week, I'm the uh, stadium supervisor, trying to get myself back into uh, the action of coaching. Hopefully, I uh, Maybe I might get back into it. We'll see. Uh, but I'm enjoying myself right now. Uh, also being on uh, this uh, this great sports cast with you guys and enjoying myself. Love the conversation. Uh, love the uh, different uh, personalities and uh, different viewpoints. That's what the world needs. Everybody don't need to think the same way, but we need to respect everyone. Uh, so that is what I am doing at, at the moment. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much. Uh, this has again been our 26th episode. I apologize. I had a little cough, but uh, uh, God has allowed me to work it out. But uh, we'll cough. be back in two weeks. That'll be our brother Jeff's show, huh, Jeff? Cough. Uh, yeah. give, give, give my brother Phil. Give him a chance to talk about his company. 
Go ahead, Phil. Oh, uh, most definitely. Oh, go ahead. Hey, hey Rocky, Rocky move in the stories, guys. You familiar with the company? It's black owned, black operated, been in Houston since 1959. DeAndre Sam, currently owner and CEO. Oh, cool. We're you know, moving in storage. I mean, you call it, we haul it. You know, things of that nature have served the community for quite a long time. What's uh, that phone number? Moving service. Just call me, 713 748 6024. We're at 34 one quarter. Just completing in about a month or two a 62,000 square foot new warehouse climate control, things of that nature. We're going to target especially the um, uh, the community of the medical center and the surrounding area because we're still in the same location. So we're we'll better to meet the community su supply and demand. So just let us know. You know where to find us. You know the name. You see the trucks. How, how long I, has A Rocket been in business? Since 1959. Mm -hmm. Second generation yep. now with DeAndre running everything. Yep. And uh, yep. we, we get along pretty good these days. So mm -hmm. you drop by anytime. I'm in the office or out and about. You see me. You know how to get in touch with me, guys. Spread the word. Most people already know. So we, we have some, some interesting things going on around there. And just serving the community and continuing to grow and, and make things better for everybody. Mr. Sam once told me when I was a young dude working around there as a kid, at some point, everybody has to move. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Just be, and, and why not be ready to move them? So, I know that's what right. Well, I can vouch for you guys because you guys used to come over to my office and you guys used to move us, and you guys all, always did an outstanding job. So, yeah, I can definitely vouch for office office services too. Yeah, as well as residential, commercial, you know, interstate. And we do some out of state. Actually, I had the great privilege recently of moving. Uh, a Lamar University basketball coach, Mikhail McKay, uh, to University of Kentucky, where he's the assistant uh, basketball coach, along with Alvin Brooks Jr. So mm -hmm. those okay. guys have used us from Houston, Lamar, Lamar to Kentucky. So, and we're actually going to get Coach McKay on the show when he has time. He wants to do it. I've already vetted him for it, and you guys can call and talk to him. Whatever, I got his number. He'll be more than happy to come on the show. He's the assistant uh, basketball coach. And you'll see him on the tube when they start playing here in October and November. Okay. Sounds well, good. Understood. Thanks, guys. Uh, Appreciate it. Hey, um, A Rocket is our first sponsor, and, and we totally appreciate it. And we, and we will be sponsoring more. Give a shout out. Just huh? give me a little time. We'll get it yes, together. Sir. Okay. Again, this is our 26th episode of Sunday Five Side Live with the president, Jeff Walker, and we appreciate all our guests, Brother Lawrence, uh, our new board member, Dennis Bramley, and we appreciate it. And we'll be back in two weeks on Sunny Five Side Live. Any last shout out? I want to thank everyone. Outstanding show, guys. Thank you, Scully. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, we'll Phil. We'll see you in two weeks on Sunny Five Side Live.